The form that most people feed of vitamin D is cholecalciferol or just vitamin D3. The interesting thing about high D is that it's the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 metabolite. So within this body, the vitamin D3 that most people would feed has to go through two steps, two hydroxylation steps before it can get to the active form and have its function. So the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3, which is what Heidi is, is actually the circulating form. So that would be the, the metabolite that you get after the hydroxylation in the liver. And if you were to check your vitamin D status, whether it's you at the doctor or if we were looking at it in the animals, what we're going to actually measure is the circulating form, so that 25 hydroxy vitamin D3. But that's not the active form in the animal. It still has to go through the kidneys and be hydroxylated again into the active form. So you can have a faster response basically by feeding the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 form in Heidi because you're bypassing that activation, that first step in the liver. Um, you know, you get it right into the bloodstream and have that circulating form that can have some, some activity once it goes through the kidneys. There is only one high D. It's actually the original 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 product that was available on the market. It's been available in the US in poultry for more than 25 years. And it's been fed in swine for over seven years and, and is also available for use in cattle in the United States. And it's growing in other regions as well, but uh, the high D is really the original, the first one that was available on the market. With high D, we have a very strong quality control program, so it's very pure form. Um, there can be other metabolites, vitamin D metabolites, that could be um, produced during the manufacturing process, and, and we go through several cleanup steps to make sure that we just have the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 in our products. So it's very pure form. Um, we're concerned about vitamin stability, obviously that's a concern in, with all vitamins, but um, we know that we have very stable form and um, you know, the bioavailability of, of the metabolite is key also with our product. We know other vitamin D3 metabolites can maybe have consequences that you, you don't want, um, so having a, a pure form of 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 is, is key. Um, the stability, again, plays a role, the, the form of the vitamin is important and the neat thing with high D is that we we have the feed grade forms um, that are available in different concentrations depending on production stage and species but we also have what's called high D solution which is a water soluble form that could be used in uh, liquid feed applications or in water applications um, additionally you'd want to look at the pure from a purity standpoint there could be other um, not necessarily vitamin D metabolites, but other potential negative compounds, um, things that you don't want to be feeding the animals could be there. So understanding the manufacturing process of the product is really important to understand what vitamin D metabolite or metabolites are present and then those other potential contaminants that could be there. We have many, many research papers, so more than 100 different uh, research publications across species from around the globe. Um, we also have a large data set within the United States and in North America, um, you know, whether it's poultry studies or swine studies, and we're building our cattle or ruminant data set um, as well to, to have additional supporting materials from local you know, producers under North American uh, facilities and uh, normal production standards that we would see in the United States and Canada. In our research data set we have data from across species and around the globe looking at how HiD can support, support bone strength. Uh, we also have data looking at how HiD could support uh, immune function or immune health which is really important to all livestock and then we also have data looking at how HiD can support uh, muscle growth. So all of those factors combined can contribute to overall lifetime performance and productivity and helping maintain animals in the herd longer.